Hey guys, I'm Leah Nicole. If you're new, welcome. I hope you're all staying warm and safe during the holiday season. Now, while it's a time for most of us to be joyful and thankful, there are some families who are currently grieving and still searching for closure. In today's case, we have a man who went missing in 2020 under mysterious circumstances in a town with underlying racism. His girlfriend called his brother to report that he went missing, and after a fight they had, the details surrounding his case continues to leave his family searching for answers. This is the case of Devontae Morgan. Now, Devontae Morgan, originally from San Francisco, was a 28-year-old who had a strong bond with his mother, Terry, and his brother, Anthony. His mother described him as being born special with an energy that attracted people to him. Even the nurses wanted to hold him when he was born. His little brother considered Devontae his favorite person and actually aspired to be like him. Family meant everything to Devante, and he never missed any family events. He was also musically talented, being able to sing, rap, and play multiple instruments. His talent helped him overcome a stuttering problem he had for almost 12 years. When he sang, you couldn't even hear the stutter. Devante was not only popular in his community, but also known for his sense of humor and outgoing nature just always entertaining others. His playful and lively spirit was admired by his family and by women also. He was known to be a ladies man. So in 2019, Devante met a woman at a concert in San Francisco who was actually 20 years older than him. As soon as they locked eyes at the concert, they became inseparable and started dating. They quickly fell for each other and did many things together. She would often take Devonte out and they would travel together frequently. One time, I think she took him to Vegas and Devonte was pretty much living his best life. It was evident that Devonte was clearly in love and fully committed to this relationship. However, his family noticed several red flags about her despite wanting him to be happy. But before we jump into today's case, I do want to thank Timu for sponsoring today's video. If you don't know what Timu is, you're definitely missing out. It's basically an online marketplace that offers affordable products such as cooking essentials, home essentials, beauty products, jewelry, clothing. Timu is also having a massive site-wide sale with savings up to 90% off like 90% you can't even beat that there is free shipping and free returns for up to 90 days and a five dollar credit for late delivery Timu also offers a price protection policy so if you order something and the price drops within 30 days you can request a partial refund so I have five items that I really liked. One of them is an essential oil diffuser, which was a must have for me. It works amazingly and my whole place smelled so good. Now let's talk about the kitchen set. This set has everything you need for cooking and baking. I really admire the wood details and the spoons and spatulas are of high quality and very sturdy. The table mats were also my favorite, so I decided to replace my old ones. I wanted a brighter color in the kitchen and these mats had no holes or stains and it was affordable. I also purchased a furry pink rug for the girls room. It's not only super cute and light, but it also doesn't shed. I love it because I don't want them messing up my brand new carpet. So far, this rug is great. So download the Timu app through my link in the description box below to get a $100 coupon bundle for free. Or search my code right here on the Timu app to claim. Let me know the items that you purchased. Again, thank you so much Timu for sponsoring today's video. And let's jump back into today's case.
On May 4th, 2020, Devontae and his girlfriend decided to drive down to Mount Shasta, California, which was a four hour drive from San Francisco. They rented a car and booked a room at the Cold Greek Inn, a bed and breakfast. Devontae informed his girlfriend that one of his family members would be hosting a party the next day on May 5th, so he made plans to return back home. Like I said earlier, guys, in the video, Devontae was extremely family-oriented. Family meant a lot to him, so he wasn't going to miss this event for nothing. During the trip, Devontae's phone was actually broken, so Anthony called Devontae's girlfriend's phone to get in contact with him. Anthony asked Devonte how he was and what he was doing, and Devonte seemed fine and happy. It was like their regular phone conversations. A little did Anthony know that it would be the last time he ever spoke with his brother again. Now, Ma Shasta, located in California, is a small town that is primarily known as a destination for travelers to unwind and relax. It offers luxury resort retreats, as well as opportunities for wilderness, camping, providing a cabin-like mountain aesthetic. This makes it an ideal spot for those seeking a serene and peaceful atmosphere. Additionally, Mount Shasta is renowned as a spiritual town due to its majestic mountains and rivers. Many people believe that it serves as a cleansing place for the mind and heart. With this in mind, Devontae's girlfriend, who was really into spiritual things, was drawn to Mount Shasta. She had an interest in crystals, sage, and often discussed like horoscopes and the universe. Like she was one of those people, if y'all get what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Therefore, she believed that visiting Mount Shasta would provide a unique and positive experience for her and Devante. However, Mount Shasta became a nightmare for the Morgan family. On May 5th, 2020, Devontae's girlfriend called Anthony and informed him that they had gotten into a fight. Devontae stormed out after the fight and she hasn't seen him since. Anthony is obviously confused because he doesn't know what's going on. While speaking with her, he noticed that there was no emotion or urgency in her voice. So as a result, he assumed that there was nothing alarming happening and decided to wait for Devontae to come back believing that he was fine. So he kind of, you know, reassured her that, hey, I guess everything is okay. Devante would just come back. You know, whenever you guys fight, you guys often take a little break away from each other. Everything is fine. He'll be back. He was not under the impression that it was an emergency and we we can't find Devante. Let's go find him right now. That That wasn't the energy she was giving him. Now, two days have gone by. It's May 7th and there is no sign of Devante. Devante's girlfriend called Anthony again and informed him that Devante had been missing since the 5th. Concerned now, Devante's family advised the girlfriend to file a missing persons report immediately. As Devante remained unseen and unheard from, she went to the Mount Shasta Police Department around 9.16 a.m. and she explained that her boyfriend was missing and that she had no idea of his whereabouts. She informed the police that Devante woke her up early in the morning on May 5th to smoke a cigarette together. Although she expressed annoyance at being disturbed from her sleep, they still went outside to smoke. It was at that moment they realized they had left the key inside the motel room and required help from the night clerk to regain entry. She mentioned that they argued continuously throughout the morning until Devante eventually just left on foot. They mutually decided to take some time apart to calm down. She mentioned seeing Devante later that morning when she went to witness the sunrise. According to her, she spotted him walking down North Mount Shasta Boulevard. She said he still appeared upset and she chose to give him space and proceeded to just return back to the motel. She told police that whenever they fought, they would often just part ways to cool off and then meet back up later. She expressed this was something they did 
very frequently. The Mount Shasta police took note of what Devante was wearing and took note that he had a broken phone as well. He had on black sweats, a hat, and flip-flops. However, while the police were documenting everything she said and you know what led up to the fight, they found it strange that she showed no emotion about her boyfriend being missing. One of the investigators remarked she didn't act upset or concerned. She was acting erratic and seemed unfocused. It was unusual for someone who should care about him to not show emotion while filing a missing persons report. At this point, Devante's family headed to Mount Shasta on May 7th to find him. And rightfully so, two days without hearing from Devante is way too long. As I mentioned earlier, he made plans on the 5th to attend a family event, which was something he wouldn't miss for the world. So for him to suddenly disappear like that, it was very weird. During the car ride to Mount Shasta, Anthony kept expressing his nervousness as he wasn't sure if he would see his brother again. He was honestly afraid. His mother and aunt were very focused on finding him because it was unlike Devante to just disappear. What made matters worse is that he didn't have a phone at the time, so there was no way to directly contact him. When they actually spoke with Devante's girlfriend in person, they were confused. They couldn't get a solid answer about what really happened to Devante. Anthony expressed that whenever he talked to her, he, it felt like she was just talking in circles. They got the sense that she was deflecting them from the truth, which made them wonder one, why was she being so inconsistent? And two, did something happen to Devante while she was around? When Devante's family arrived, they created missing person flyers and conducted their own search in Mount Shasta. They were also very frustrated with the local police, feeling like they had overlooked Devante's case because of his race, you know, him being a young black man. Based on the circumstances leading up to his disappearance, they concluded that Devante had left voluntarily. The Mount Shasta Police Department also expressed to the family that they needed additional assistance in the search for Devante. Due to Mount Shasta being a small town, they really lacked necessary resources to fully investigate Devante's case, so they asked other police agencies to assist them. A local resident reported to the police as a witness that she saw Devante and his girlfriend fighting on May 5th around 9.30 a.m. However, investigators were thrown off by the fact that the girlfriend claimed she didn't talk to him around that time. Despite this inconsistency, they couldn't further investigate Devante's girlfriend due to the lack of evidence. So on May 14th, the police obtained several surveillance videos from different stores. In these videos, Devante can be seen walking down various streets, entering a gas station. From 9.14 a.m. to 10.40 a.m., he is seen walking towards a store that sells crystals right around the time he disappeared. The area he was seen walking around is considered safe. It has many small businesses where you can buy souvenirs and antiques, so it wasn't like he was walking around anywhere sketchy before he disappeared. The police also noted that Devante did not appear to be drunk or under the influence of drugs. He was completely sober and simply traveling through the town. He was then last seen traveling back to the motel. On May 20th, a search and rescue operation was organized to find Devante. The police searched wooded areas, utilized search dogs, and extensively covered the neighborhoods. However, there were still no signs of Devante. The police assured the family that they had exerted all efforts to locate Devante, but unfortunately, no leads were found. Unfortunately, for months, Devante's case went cold. It seemed like he had just vanished and his girlfriend, who was with him at the time of his disappearance, wasn't of any help. While they were searching at Mount Shasta, the family became annoyed with the girlfriend. She would often complain about being emotionally overwhelmed and how everything was just too much for her. 
She constantly talked about herself and Devante's family couldn't handle it anymore. They decided to continue the search without her and when she went back to San Francisco, they never heard from her again. Devante's family believes that his girlfriend knows more than what she is letting on and they suspected that something more sinister happened to him. However, his girlfriend was never charged with anything related to Devante's disappearance. By June 2020, Devante's family was searching on their own without any assistance. They even offered a $25,000 reward for any information that could help locate Devante. During their own search in Mount Shasta, the family found that the people there were unwelcoming and uninviting. They experienced instances where missing persons um, posters were torn down the next morning after they put them up. The family also noticed a strange energy from the town residents. It was hard to ignore the fact that the town is predominantly a white neighborhood, which made the family feel very much uncomfortable. According to Anthony, he often witnessed a truck displaying a Confederate flag driving throughout the community frequently. On one occasion, when they inquired about Devante to someone in the community, they were subjected to threats and had guns pulled out on them. The person even went as far as saying they would tie Devante to a tree if they were to ever locate him. There was also another time when someone threw a raw chicken foot at them while they were busy posting flyers. As a result, Devante's mother, brother, and aunt fell extremely unsafe in Mount Shasta. After months of searching for Devante, his case unfortunately began to grow cold as no leads were emerging. However, in February 2021, a man matching Devante's description was discovered in Jackson County, Oregon. The victim had suffered severe burns and had to be identified through dental records. Unfortunately, the victim turned out not to be Devante Morgan. Terry and the rest of the family hold the belief that he is still alive. They also suspect that his girlfriend may have been involved or has knowledge of what happened to Devante. And what's interesting about this is that Devante had a major testimony before he went missing. Devante was actually shot in the hand and pelvis while he was on his own front porch, but it was not intended for him. So he pretty much just got caught in a crossfire. To cope with the traumatic situation, he eventually fell into depression. Devante turned to smoking weed and drinking. However, he eventually wanted to improve his mental state and started to take care of himself again. He went to the gym every day and spent time with his family, appearing to be in a better place mentally. However, when he met this girlfriend, he started drinking again and fell into a deep depression. His family definitely expressed that they saw a change with Devante when he entered in this relationship. His family shared that his relationship with his girlfriend was also unhealthy. They frequently fought and the relationship was not centered around happiness at all. To be honest, there are many factors to consider in Devante's case, such as this toxic relationship with an older woman who was the last person to see him in a town that has underlining racism with people actively removing missing flyers. So it's unclear what exactly happened to Devante Morgan. But what I do know is that God's hand was definitely on Devante's life, surviving a bullet to the head without any life-threatening, you know, disabilities can only be attributed to God's intervention. Sometimes if we're being honest, the enemy, the devil, Satan, whatever you want to call him, recognizes when God has chosen you for greater things in this world. Often he sends people into your life to hold you back or to simply destroy you. So it's difficult to overlook the circumstances of Devante's life prior to his disappearance and the individuals within his close circle. That's why I believe it's extremely important for us to be vigilant and watchful, watchful with who we have in our life and also don't underestimate your prayers when you're asking God for protection and discernment in your life as well. The police from Mount Shasta expressed that they are still working on the case and still receiving tips. 
But there's no new information regarding Devontae's Morgan suspicious disappearance. I highly encourage you to keep Devontae's family in your prayers during this challenging time. It is incredibly difficult to cope with the uncertainty of not knowing where your loved one is. The constant worry of whether they are alive or gone is truly heart-wrenching. It adds to the sadness when you are unable to even piece together the details that led up to their disappearance. I'm definitely asking for divine intervention so that they may find peace and hope in their hearts. So let's go ahead and pray for the family. Father God, we all come together and we pray for the Morgan family right now, Lord God. We ask you, Father, Lord God, for your peace and healing, Lord, during this time. This is definitely a fresh case, Father, Lord God. This case happened in 2020. So while we're all here about to celebrate Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's, just the holidays with our family, Father Lord God, especially this week, Thanksgiving is Thursday. Father Lord God, I ask you to bring healing and peace for the Morgan family right now because I know that they're going to miss, they're going to miss Devante so dearly, Father Lord God. Bring them rest, Father Lord God. I pray, Father Lord God, that you also bring more attention to this case, Father Lord God. What's in the dark, Lord, always comes to light. I pray, Father Lord God, that you expose anything, Father God, for this family. Lord, you know exactly what happened to Devante. We don't know. We're unsure. His family, they're unsure. It's like they have this, this hole in their heart because they don't know what happened to him, Father God. So I ask you that you provide them answers. I pray, Father Lord God, for new leads, for new evidence. I pray for that anyone that's involved with either harming him or his disappearance, Father Lord God, I pray, Father Lord God, that they will be prosecuted, Father Lord God, and you will bring justice to this family, Father Lord God. So we thank you for all that you're going to do. I ask you, Father Lord God, that you also protect us during this holiday season. Protect us and keep us safe while we're traveling, while we're meeting um, new people, while we're meeting our family, Father Lord God. I pray, Father Lord God, that this is a season of love, of happiness, of joy, Father Lord God, and of rest. So I pray, Father Lord God, that you provide just a space for rest, Father Lord God, and just inner healing. So I ask you, Lord God, to just place your hands on all of my subscribers and place your hand on this case. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Please keep this family in your prayer and definitely enjoy your Thanksgiving. And I'll see you guys in the next case. Stop.